Good morning, Angle Lake kids. It's good to be with you here today. Um, so church is back, and I hope we see you guys coming in more and more as we go forward. The doors have been opened, and we're able to have church. Um, it does look a little different because we still got to stay spread out and wear masks, but at least we get to be together in the same building. And so I hope to see some of you guys here soon. We've seen one or two um, over the last two Sundays, and so it's been good. And I miss you guys. I say this every week. We miss you like crazy and can't wait until we can just have no restrictions and have as many people here as we want. It's something we're looking forward to, but we're glad to be able to gather together again in the building, even if there's some different rules that we're not used to. Anyways, let's pray and then we're going to get started. God, I just thank you for today. I pray this lesson, Lord God, would just uh, go to each and every person's heart, uh, the kids, the parents, everybody who watches this, God. Uh, myself, that we would learn something from it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hey, parents, it's your turn. Now, you can either pause the video now or wait until afterwards to do this, but uh, for a game today, something you guys can do there at home is hold your own talent show. And what you can do is, uh, you know, have your kids show off. It could be wacky, crazy, silly talents, or it could be how good they are at dribbling a basketball or throwing a football which you might want to go outside for not inside because you don't want to break a window <laughs> that would be not a very good talent show <laughs> but you know have a talent show and it could be dancing it could be drawing it could be any kind of thing like that and show off your talents all right to each other take some time to do that and again you can pause the video now and do that or you can do it afterwards after you've heard the lesson it all ties in so Starting with our lesson, this is our seventh week talking about parables, seventh week, um, learning all about them. I'm so proud for all of you that have stuck in with it and have been learning, working hard to learn uh, from these lessons, from the stories Jesus told. Um, we have learned what heaven is like, what God is like, and what we should be like as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is full of people who love and obey God. It's better than anything we could ever imagine and worth everything we could ever have in this life. God loves everyone. He patiently waits for people to repent of their sins and follow him. You guys remember what repent means, right? I hope so. We talked about it a little bit last week, but it's when we decide to turn away from our sins and basically face towards God, right? Change the way our life's going. We stop sinning and we start doing what God has called us to do, right? From bad to good, okay? <laughs> but, right, there are those people that repent and turn, but he will punish those um, who choose not to follow him. He wants everyone to know the truth about his son, Jesus, so everyone can love and obey him. As citizens of the kingdom of God, we tell others about Jesus Forgive those who wrong us, and we obey the commands of the Lord. Today, we're going to learn another thing um, we are to do as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We also learn a little bit about what the kingdom of heaven is like. Today's story is called the parable of the talents. Kind of like the reason we're having a talent show. Hopefully, you guys are having fun with that. Um, follow along as I read from Matthew Chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one person, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more bags. He doubled the money. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more bags. So he doubled his as well. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. 
just dug a hole and threw the money in, covered it up, hid it. <laughs> After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant, the servant whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I've earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. He was very happy. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Again, he was very happy. <laughs> then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. He doesn't sound like he was happy. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why, did you, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's take a moment to review this parable to be sure we understand what's going on. It starts out with a man going on a trip, right? I actually got a little bit of drawing here showing off some of my talents, I know. It's pretty good, huh? A pretty good artist. See, here's the man right there. He's about to go on the trip. That's why the arrow is above his head. <laughs> okay, and then um, this man, he called his servants together in the story, right? And so we see his three, his three workers, his three servants there. And he gave them his money to take care of while he was away, right? And there you see the, the first guy there with the five bags of silver. And the second one there with two bags. And the final one with one bag of silver. <clears throat> oh, I kind of skipped ahead and gave away the answers, didn't I? <laughs> How many bags of silver does it say the master gave the first servant? You should know five, right? <laughs> um, it says he received five bags. In the original language, it says the master trusted his servant with five talents. Five talents. A talent was a measurement of money. It would take a worker 20 years to earn one talent. 20 years to earn a talent, right? So five talents, which is what that guy was given, the five bags of money, right? Five talents, if each bag represents one talent, five. So five talents is a lot of money. If each of those represented 20 years, it would take a very long time to get that. We wouldn't live that long. <laughs> How many bags of silver did the second servant receive for care? Do you guys remember? No, I'm not showing the picture. See if you guys can answer this one in your group. How many bags did they have? He received two bags of silver. Or two talents, right? Each bag represents a talent. And what about the last servant? What did he get? You guys remember? One, right? He received one bag of silver, or in the original language of the story, one talent. It seems kind of odd 
that they would all receive different amounts of talents to care for while their master is away. The scripture tells us why. Can I have, or uh, in your group there, can you guys um, come together and I want you to read uh, verse 15 of our, path, our passage here in Matthew. Verse 15. Uh, Matthew 25, sorry. <laughs> Matthew chapter 25, verse 15. Read it in your group there, and then we'll come back. He gave five bags, and this is verse 15, five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. All right? So what they could handle, basically. He knew that, the third person couldn't handle five bags of silver, so he only gave him one, right? So he knew what they were capable of. He then left on his trip. So why, according to this verse, did the master divide up his money the way he did? He divided it in according to their abilities, right? He knew what they could handle. Does this mean the first servant was better than the other two? What do you guys think? Talk in your group. Does this mean the first servant, the guy who got five bags, five talents, does this mean he was better than the other two servants? Of course not, right? The first servant was no better, no more important in his master's eyes than the other two servants. He was just able to handle more money. Now, what did the first servant do with the money after his master went on the trip? You guys remember? He invested it and doubled his master's money. He earned five more bags of silver. What about the second servant? What did he do with his money that was entrusted to him? Did the same thing, right? He doubled it. He made two more bags or two more talents. And the last servant, you guys remember what he did, right? He buried it, right? He hid it. <clears throat> Verse 18 of our passage tells us, right? He dug a hole and hid his master's money. Let's look at how the master responded to these servants when he returned from his trip. What did he say to the first servant who gave uh, the, the five talents and then the five more? What did he say to him? You guys remember? Talk in your group. He was very happy, right? You guys remember that? He was very happy. He was full of praise. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together, right? He was very happy, ready to throw a party. <laughs> he says the same thing. To the servant who had two talents, right? And earned two more. In verse 23, the master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. He's saying he's going to trust him with more. And then he said, Let's celebrate together. And then what does the master say to the third uh, servant? In verse 26 and 27, it says, But the master replied, You wicked, lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten more, right? It would have grown. And so he was very upset, right, with this last person. Clearly, the master was not happy with this servant. Let's look at what the servant had said to the master in verse 24 and 25. It says, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it uh, in the earth. Look, here's your money back. The master has a right to be angry with this servant he had expected uh, the servant to take good care 
of the talent entrusted to him. But instead, the servant was lazy and just buried it. So now it's dirty. <laughs> and then he made excuses for not doing better, right? Like the master said, he could have easily put the money in the bank and it would have at least gained some, some more money from it. A little extra money on top, right? It probably would have been easier to go to the bank than to dig a hole anyways, which is pretty crazy, right? You guys agree, I'm sure. Would, would you say it's easier to dig a hole and bury something or just drive to the bank, which you guys can't drive yet, but you could have someone drive you so it'd be even easier. <laughs> so how did the master punish this lazy servant? It tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verse 28 through 30. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. So the guy who doubled the five bags, the five talents and made 10 talents, he got this extra bag, right? So now he has 11 talents. I didn't know we'd be doing math today and I'm really bad at math. So hopefully I'm doing good. <laughs> to those who use well, and this is you know, the master speaking again, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance, which means more than they need, right? But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now, throw this useless servant into the outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The useless servant was thrown out and the small amount he was supposed to be responsible for was given to the servant who had 10 talents. Now that we fully understand the parable, we've fully gone through it and re-gone through it, <laughs> Let's think about what it means for our lives, right? What was, and remember, right? This is Jesus telling this story to teach us something, okay? So what does this mean for our lives? Who is the master, do you guys think? Talk in your group for a few minutes, pause the video. Who is the master in this, in this story? That's right. The master in this story represents God, right? What about the servants? Who are they? Again, pause the video, take some time to talk about this. Who are the servants in this story? The servants represent us, right? People, represent people, all people. <clears throat> so now, these bags of silver, these talents, right? What do those represent? What do the bags of silver represent? Go ahead and pause the video, talk about amongst yourselves and your group. The talents are talents. They are the things we can do well, things we're good at, right? Does anybody watching this video have the same talents as someone else? Does anybody have the same exact talent? They're just as good, right? The exact same. Go ahead and talk, some, talk amongst yourself again. All right. God has given us all different talents, okay? And remember, now we're not talking about money, okay? We're talking about the things we're good at, right? So talents, the, that kind of talents. Like you're really good at basketball or you're really good at running, or you're really good at video games, right? We're talking about those kind of talents now. God has given us all different kinds of talents. But one thing is for sure, all of these, all of these talents that God has given us are meant to be used to glorify Him, right? To give praise to Him. That's what all of these talents He's given us should be used for. <clears throat> In your group, we're going to do a, a, a sword drill, all right? So have your Bible, take your bookmarks out, hold your Bible up above your head, right? Get ready. 
We're going to do a sword drill to show us that. All right. When I say go, only when I say go. All right. Parents, after I say go, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. On your mark, get set, go. All right, you guys. Hopefully you found that fast. Comment who the winner was. I want to know. <laughs> In And we're going to read it right now. In his grace... God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you, excuse me, <clears throat> if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kind, kindness to others, do it gladly. Think to yourself, you guys, think to yourself. What are some things you do really well? What are some things you do really well? Do you understand that God is the one who makes it possible for you to do those things. God is the one that makes it possible for you to do those things, right? Those talents you have. I'm a teacher because God gives me the ability to study the Bible and present it in a way that makes sense, right? Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. Without God, there is no way I could ever be a teacher. There's no way. Without God... <laughs> I wouldn't be a teacher. I would, I would have done something else, right? It's, you know, God called me to be a teacher and he equipped me to do this. Everyone is good at something. And in the parable of the talents, we learn that we are supposed to use our talents to glorify God. What happens when we use our talents well, according to this parable? When we use our talents well, according to this parable, when we do a good job. Do you guys remember? <laughs> when we use our talents well, we get better and better at them. And we get even more talents, right? God gives us more, more stuff. Makes us good at other things that we probably thought we'd never be good at, but he makes us good at them. For example, in, in what? In being a faithful teacher, I have gained the talent of using the computer to prepare my lessons, which is true, right? I would not have ever spent so much time typing on a computer and doing stuff, you know, if God had not equipped me to do so. I've, I've spent a lot of time on computers and become way better at them because of it. Uh, same with the sound booth, right? He gave me that talent because of me being here, me doing stuff here in the church. <clears throat> now I know how to use uh, my computer talents for other things too. When we use our talents to glorify God, he rewards us. What happens if we don't use our talents? If we choose to be lazy or self-serving, right? If we choose to be lazy or only do stuff that makes us feel good, what happens with those talents? Today's story teaches us that God will take away those talents and punish us, which would be really sad, right? Last week, we learned that people who say they love God but don't obey him don't really love God, right? Our talents are the same. If we aren't using our talents to glorify God, we probably don't really love him. When we love God, we will use the abilities he has given us to serve him. Now, here's something important to remember. Just because you are young, it does not mean you don't have talents to share with the world right now. Just because you're young doesn't mean you don't have talents from God yet. 
First Timothy chapter four, verse 12 says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. I'm gonna read that again, okay? First Timothy four twelve says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. You, even as a kid, you guys, can be an example to every citizen of the kingdom of heaven when you serve God by doing things you are good at. The talents you have right now, they, they can speak to everyone, to adults, right? And show them how good God is. Remember Colossians 3.23, where it says, work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Whatever talent you have, it is from God and it is for God. Let's think of some of our talents in your groups there. And I want you guys to think of ways you can use those talents for God. Talk in your group, okay? Go ahead and pause me real quick. We're almost done. But I want you to even make a list of the talents you have and then think of ways, and you can write them out, that you can use those talents for God. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully you guys made a good list there. We're going to go ahead and pray. And my challenge is for you guys. That list you made, maybe you just made it in your head or maybe you just talked, it, talked about it. My challenge is for you guys to use those talents. Like don't just let it be a list, right? That you never look at again. Use those talents to bring glory to God. To show someone the love of God. Let's pray. God, I just thank you for this time. I pray you bless this lesson. Bless those that have heard it, God. Let's apply it to our lives, Jesus. I pray you just keep everyone safe, God, healthy, and that we see everyone here on Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, love you guys. Hope to see you Sunday. Bye.